Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is going to be Cube versus Lowry on Red Comet, and hopefully will be much more sane than the previous game, which probably will be the case. So yeah, Cube, in case you guys did not see, won the last tournament. Well done. Lowry got fourth place. So this is two really good players, and we'll now watch them play. See how they do. Cube starting out in the northeast side of the map, going for Light Vehicle Factory, while I Lowry going for Light Vehicle Factory in the southwest side of the map, with... Starting out Scorchers, no darts, as is Cubay, though Lowry going for three Scorchers before a Mason, while Cubay going for four. Lowry looks to be going for a bit of a faster expansion, while Cubay going for more of an aggressive build. Probably just going to go straight for the Calm Dive right off the bat, though honestly with the Scorcher support, this is not going to work out too well for Cubay, because this is going to be Scorchers in position for this commander. The commander way in the base. Both players also going for support Calm. Both players want that build power on level up, but we'll see. Cube apparently declaring that they are, in fact, a girl, according to this particular commander name. Since that is what build power is apparently for, and they want build power. I will, I suppose I shall refer to Cube as she from this point on. I honestly didn't know. I mean, Cube is, well, the character at least is genderless, so I was using they. But hey, if that's what you want, Cube, I, I can do that too. That's fine. So Cube, a couple darts and three scorchers for them. More scorchers coming afterwards. While three Scorchers coming in for Lowry, and Lowry back in the base, getting a Mason, and more Scorchers coming up. Lowry going to be going up and taken out. Oof, I don't know, this Lotus is going to be a bit of a pain. If the Lotus gets hit quickly, then this will work, but unfortunately, wrong angle to do that. Though Lowry does manage to take out the Lotus pretty effectively, and no defense is coming in. Gets a Metal Extractor. Gets a second melee extractor right after, and Scorcher trying to come up, though. That Scorcher will get up in time, but Lowry Micro is pretty well losing their own Scorcher, though. Does lose their own Scorcher, but still deals a lot of damage back at Lowry's base. Cubase Scorcher's coming in for a counterattack, getting rid of that Lotus, getting rid of the melee extractor, and possibly getting rid of the factory outright. Definitely going to kill that Mason and other melee extractor as well. Mason goes down, melee extractor goes down. Factory, however, also goes down. Cube loses their factory. Lowry's factory in a bit of a better position, and Lowry's commander completely out of position. Looks like both players are going to lose their factory right off the bat. And yes, there goes Lowry's factory. Cuban and Lowry both lose their factories. So much for that. That did not work out especially well for Cuban or Lowry. But hey, they're even at this point, so neither player really getting an advantage. Though Cuban does have an economic advantage and has been expanding pretty well. While Lowry, on the other hand, focusing more on defense, and has had to invest more in defense as well, so Cube definitely gets ahead on this one. Lowry trying to rebuild a bit, getting another Metal Extractor, getting more Lotuses, and finally gets rid of that last quarter. This dart's still in position, but Cube can't see too much of it. Can see enough, though. Does see what's being rebuilt. And I think Cube might be rebuilding the factory over here, getting a caretaker first, and going for a gunship plant on top of that. Well, okay. When I said this game wouldn't be as silly as the last one, I meant just in terms of cheats. But honestly, this isn't so much silly as it is unorthodox and cool. Cheats are just... Come on, seriously, why use cheats in a multiplayer game? Admittedly, in that particular game, it was just a complete mess anyway. But this is silly in the good way. This is silly in the way that really shows out the flexibility that Zero-K has. Lowry getting their caretaker out, but 30 seconds after Cube. Now, the Cube focusing on an expansion, leaving the caretaker to build the factory on its own, while... Dart coming around. Oh, Dart coming around here. Lowry cannot stop this. No units in place to stop this, and it looks like Lowry getting the caretaker possibly to rebuild this light vehicle factory. Cube, 30 seconds away from a gunship plant, going for a calm nab. Nats and Valk or sorry, Nats and Vindicator. Going for heavy calm nab and hovercraft factory up for Lowry, which is no surprise given what they were doing in the tournament, because they were doing hovercraft factory all the time. Every game was hovercraft factory. I think it might have been one exception from all the games they played. But basically, all their games are Hovercraft Factory. While Cube, on the other hand, Cube just did everything. So this Hovercraft Factory is no surprise, and Lowry, once again, just like Cube, going for expansion while letting the Caretaker deal with the Factory. Don't know if I agree with this, given that there are Aryans coming in, and honestly, Hovercraft Factory is the best choice Lowry could have made. As long as Lowry builds Flails. If Lowry builds Flails, Lowry has no problem winning this game. Otherwise, Lowry will lose their commander. Outright. That's really what it comes down to right now. Cube is reclaiming their old factory as well, just to help the construction go. That Vindicator is almost done. Even now, I don't know if there's not enough time for the flail to be built up. 
The factory is very nearly complete, but I think 15 seconds would have made a difference. Because that Vindicator is up, the Nat's going to be up within the next 30 seconds. No, not even, like 10 seconds. And Scru no Dagger's coming in, not Flails, because Lowry has really no way of knowing that there's going to be a gunship other than the fact that they are fighting Cubay, and it's Cubay. But not working off of metagame knowledge instead, just going off of the typical start with the Dagger. We'll eventually scout that out, and actually we'll scout that out pretty quickly. Going along a good, oh, never mind, was going along a good path to scout that out, but that has been foiled, and it looks like interception will not occur either. Cubay is going to be taking the commander. Lauder's going to lose their commander, and with that, quite possibly the game. Nat's coming in first, as usual, going to stun out the commander. Not much Lauder can do here. Commander can get stunned out, and Lauder realizes, oh crap, everything's gone up. Everything's gone completely the wrong way. So that, there's that Vindicator going back into the base. Scrubber trying to do it again, but really there's not much. And Lowry's commander just getting carted away to its doom. That's the commander. Being carted away to death. QB, not sure if he's going to actually kill the commander other than dropping it, but next to the Lotus. Not actually trying to throw it from the looks of it, just sort of keeping it there. Okay, that's a little bit unusual. Not sure what exactly the plan is, but I think Cubay may not be paying attention to that at the moment. Cubay sending out more Banshees while Lowry comes in with scrubbers, with daggers, I mean. And this commander just being put out of position, that's all. Not actually being killed. So the economy be benefits of the commander are still being provided. And flails are coming in as well, which is natural, being that we are fighting against gunships here, but still, that commander is just being left alive. There it is. It's just sort of hanging around. And Lowry, unfortunately for them though, they are going to be losing a lot to this Banshee. Mace trying to get close enough, but the Banshee can easily run away. The first flail just about done. There it goes. That first flail is now done and can be finally used to get rid of that Banshee, but even then, it's going to be kind of tricky. And that commander just sort of being left alone. The Lowry still behind though. One third of the economy, but even the army, but bear in mind part of that is the commander, which can basically be considered dead at this point. So basically no army. Oh, oh what? Oh, actually, yeah, I'm pointing out never mind, the commander isn't producing metal or energy when it's being held. I think that might be why Cubay is doing that rather than trying to kill it outright. Just hold on to it, prevent the economy bonus from the commander. I was really wrong about that. I apologize. The economy is entirely what Cubay sorry, what Lowry has built. Cubay going to be losing this Banshee to a Flail. Well, one more hit. One more hit ought to do it, but that Flail is too far away. Can't hit the Banshee outright. Cannot kill it. And Shieldbot Factory switch into Rogue and Bandit. Probably just try to take the game from that point. So yeah, Cubay way ahead now. Finally using up all the economy that they had. Because they actually were at, starting to float. And with that Shieldbot switch... Those flails are no longer going to be that useful, although the maces will be. The maces will be fine, the daggers will be okay. The flails will not do anything. The mace trying to get in... The Lowdy's just trying to make sure that they can get into a position where they don't lose their units. Trying to see what Cubay has going on. I mean, he does see what Cubay has here. Does have enough vision to see all the units that are coming in. But the mace cannot move fast enough to deal with these rogues. That's the problem. They can't actually get in there and hit them. And Lowry continuing to build up more of their economy, making up for the lack of a commander, which still just still chilling, not doing much. And Lowry double checking along the southeast side of the map will find some stuff to harass, but at the same time, a huge army coming in, at least relative to the size of Lowry's, coming in of bandits and rogues just to finish everything off, which actually shouldn't be too hard. The maces are going to be the big problem. The rogues should deal with that pretty easily. The daggers are also going to be an issue if the bandits get into a line. That's going to be the problem. Actually, the rogues, not as, they're not quite as adept as I thought they'd be at getting rid of the maces. Don't deal enough damage. They deal 280 damage a shot, but apparently not enough. They're not hitting as directly as they need to. Still, the bandits able to get rid of the daggers and the maces. Okay, one of the maces does go down. Second mace is coming in and the rogues just flooding in. Cubay has way too much production power at this point to easily be stopped. 
Not a lot of crowd control options right now for Lowry against the Rogues. The Daggers can sort of work, but the Bandits get in the way of those, and the Maces, of course, can't get in without the Rogues killing them. So, Lowry in a very tight spot right now. I mean, Q-Bay probably could push in for the win. Lowry, an air switch might work out okay. An air switch for Napalm Bombers. That seems like the most likely thing to do, but even that's really tricky. Basically, one or two shots off, and that'll be it. The Daggers are probably the best bet in terms of their line splash, but even then, just... Well, actually, I don't know. They are positioning themselves properly. Lowry micromanaging well enough and getting themselves out of this particular situation fairly easily. Well, not easily, but fairly convincingly at least. Still losing one of the maces and the bandits, despite getting one shot on the periphery, are now confidently moving in. The mace has been destroyed. Now that the mace has been destroyed, those bandits can just move in. No problem. Still, those daggers are doing very well for themselves. Making cost fairly effectively against the bandits and rogues. But even making cost isn't enough. They have to make at least double cost just to make up for the fact that Lowry's economy is half that of Cubase. And the production is making advantage it's taking full advantage of the economy, but it's making the most of it. And nice raid getting through to the supply line, getting rid of all the incoming bandits, or trying to get rid of the incoming bandits. Losing a few daggers in the process though. It has to be careful not to the main army. The main thing is to get rid of the reinforcements. That's what matters. Because if that can be done, then at least there will be less to deal with overall. It buys Lowry some time. Going for a flank as well. Not the best flank though. Cubay moving their units into a ball to avoid that flank, but even then, still getting flanked out. And Lowry able to take out a few more bandits, but losing a couple daggers in the process. Bear in mind that daggers are more expensive than bandits by... Actually, never mind. They're the same cost as bandits. Or just about. They're like 10 metal more. But not much. However, Lowry still throws in the towel. That is game. Here's what happens to the comm nap. Oh, just explodes harmlessly and... Well, not harmlessly. Damages the Vindicator, but otherwise... That was game. That's it. Well... Yeah, I think this is a... No, this is actually... People are wondering about the age of this game. This game was played three days ago. So it was played last Wednesday. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. I'll see if I can get that plugin working. The Twitch chat plugin. But otherwise... Thanks everyone for watching, and have a good night.